What is going on, everybody? It is Friday, April 6th. Got a kind of interesting slate. You know, perfect amount of games, in my opinion, at 7. And uh, I'm kind of excited to play some baseball tonight. Uh, I'm joined now, as always, by fellow awesomeo.com writer, Jake Hari. Jake, how are you? Good, yeah. I, I agree on the slate. It's it's interesting. Um, some weather concerns, a lot of a lot of bats I want to use, and some fun pitchers as well. So, should be fun, fun Friday of baseball. And um, I, yeah, I like the seven games. I like that part of it. We don't have to sort through fifteen of them like we do on a lot of these yeah. upcoming Fridays. Um, we're only going to be talking about the main slate tonight. There's only two games early, uh, both around four o'clock, and the Braves game has an overwhelming chance of rain right now so mm -hmm. it might not be a slate that truly exists so we're just going to focus on the main slate for uh for this video uh you ready to just dive in yeah let's do it all righty first game up uh the yankees hosting the orioles yankees with a 5.2 uh, implied run total orioles 4.1 uh, it's a 61 percent chance to win for the yankees and uh, we've got Sabathia going for New York and Kevin Gaussman going for Baltimore. Um, any thoughts on pitching here? I'm not the biggest Sabathia fan in the world. And it's yeah. it's hard for me to look too closely at Baltimore. Gaussman is 7,200 on FanDuel. And in a game with that high of an implied total for the Yankees, it's really hard for me to use him on FanDuel. What are you thinking for DK? For DK, yeah, I, I do have some interest. He's 5,600 on DraftKings. And Gaussman's a guy who I, I love playing. Uh, I played him a bunch last year, and he had that big second half. Yeah. And a lot of it, well, well, some of it, he had huge catcher splits. So he was really good when Caleb Joseph caught him. Um, because Joseph was one of the best pitch framers, and he was really bad when um, Castillo, Wellington Castillo, would catch him. So I don't know if that was real or what, but it seemed like it lined up every time that Caleb Joseph caught him. He had a really good outing, and when it wasn't Caleb Joseph, he had a really bad outing and got hit around pretty hard. So last game he got caught by Chance Sisko. Um, not, I mean, he kind of got – unlucky with, with some of the hits he gave up. Gave up like four runs in the first inning or three or four runs. and But he had a 15.1 swinging, uh, swinging strike rate. And this is a really tough spot, but I think individually he can navigate most of these Yankee hitters. He's got a really good slider and splitter. So he's got really good swing and miss stuff. It's just, it's a really tough matchup. And like you said, the implied total uh, but he's 5,600, so you don't need him to be perfect here. But I think he can rack up quite a few Ks, assuming nothing's wrong with him because his velocity <laughs> was down a little bit. So um, that's sort of my long way of saying I do have some interest. I don't know what exactly I'm going to do with him if I can trust him with just one lineup tonight. Yeah, I, I think seeing that price at 5,600 on DK um... – He's a guy that has some skill, and I think if you want to go against the Yankee bats and not have them in a stack, I can see a scenario where you take a flyer on Gaussman, hope to get some Ks. You know, you really, they're so power, the Yankees are so power heavy from the right side that that kind of helps him out a little bit. You know, you're not really worried about the, the long ball from you know Brett Gardner, Gregorius. So if he can manage to get through Judge and Stanton and Sanchez, like the, there's a path to a good game there. There just might be too many landmines for him in that Yankees lineup. Um, his price on FanDuel has him completely unplayable. But I think as a second pitcher in an anti-Yankee stack, there's there's a path to logic there. Yeah. I'm not, I mean, I'm not thrilled about the matchup, but no. I just think individually, like if, if he's on and his velocity is back up a little bit, you know, it's the first start. So guys' velocities are usually down a little bit. Um, so I'm not super concerned, especially because he didn't skip a start or anything. But um, 
just something to keep an eye on. And if he's he's going to be really low owned because people are going to see oh, this, absolutely. this total. So like, I kind of wish I was MMEing like you do, because then I could just get some exposure and not have to go with one lineup, either a hundred percent or zero percent. That, that totally makes sense. Yeah. That 5.2 implied total for the Yankees is the second highest on the board right now. Um, so it's definitely something you want to keep in the back of your mind. So with that 5.2 implied total, let's take a look at Yankees bats. Uh, I like Stanton here. 4,900 on FanDuel, 5,600 on DK. Um, you're paying paying a heavy, heavy premium, but I think that he looks pretty nice tonight. Yeah, so, I mean, you can make a case for any of these guys, really. I think that... I would probably rank them like my favorite bat on the Yankees is probably Gary Sanchez and then Gregorius. And then after that, I think Gardner actually would probably be my, my favorite guy after that. But um, like individually, I think that they're all decent plays. I'm probably going to stay away from judge and Stanton because there's so many outfield plays I want. Okay. But like if you want to stack up the Yankee, like if, if something's wrong with Gaussman and he could get lit up here. So He's going to have to be really good in order to shut this lineup down two or three times through the order. So I get the Yankees stack. I'm not going to do it, but um, I'm more likely to play Gaussman, actually, as, as weird as that sounds. I hear but, you. Yeah. I love Gardner on, uh, on FanDuel tonight. Only 2800 which is a really, really nice price. 4100 on on DK. Um, so I think, I think he's at a bit of a discount today. Uh, I, like I said, I like Stanton a lot. I would like Sanchez more if I had to use just a straight catcher. I, I see the appeal of using him on DK. Um, I don't love him as much on FanDuel just because of the way that rosters get structured. Um, you could probably talk me into a little bit of Neil Walker as well, but we're, I'm probably getting a little bit further down than I would like to go in the order, at least in this case. But with that 5.2 implied total, it sort of brings everybody into play. Um, I don't see any just very obvious stacks. I don't think the pricing on the Yankees is as good as I would like it to be, but they're going to be popular because of that run total. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you have the ability, if you have the money to be able to grab it, no problem with it. Yeah. Do you like anything on the Orioles? So I like taking one-offs against Sabathia. He's not really a guy that I want to stack against. Pretty good at limiting... Um, limiting hard contact doesn't really strike out guys, but he just kind of gets, he just kind of navigates his way through lineups and eats up innings, kind of like we saw with Martin Martin Perez yesterday. Yeah. So or was that two days ago? I don't, I don't remember. So I like the days are blending together right now. Yeah, yeah, already <laughs> like six days through the season, a week through the season. Yeah, I don't want to know what it's going to be like when we're t when we're doing this on. The <laughs> june 17th yeah but then we won't have to deal with multiple sports so that that's the good part very about that. true yeah i'm uh, starting to i look at this stuff and it's just like uh how do i think russell westbrook's gonna pitch tonight and it's like oh god I'm yeah the exactly right stuff yeah <laughs> uh so machado uh, he's pretty obvious play at 4200 yeah and then um i also like scope a little bit and tim beckham scope and beckham are, are really cheap at positions that um, I don't love a ton tonight, so outside of a, a couple guys. So those would be two guys that I consider as, as one-offs. And then Machado, of course, multi-position eligibility on DraftKings. Yeah, um, I would be happy actually stacking one, two, three on the Orioles mm -hmm. and going Beckham, Machado, Scope, second base, third base, shortstop. Like, to be able to fill that stuff in and then grab power bats – at first in the outfield on, you know, sort of like one-off spots, I think could build a pretty strong lineup that would probably be relatively low owned, you know, getting three straight top of the order Orioles bats against a lefty like Sabathia is a, would be a shot that I'd be willing to take. Pricing is, is also pretty nice. Yeah. Um, uh, we're, we're both in agreement. No Sabathia, right? No Sabathia. Yeah. Um, anything down the line? Like, I don't, I don't want any Chris Davis lefty on lefty. I mean, Mancini, you could make a case for it on DraftKings. He's 3,300 dual position eligibility. I'd probably play him in the outfield if you need someone at that price. Yeah. But I think there's another, a, a few other guys that I prefer nearest price 
um, later that we'll talk about. So probably won't end up with them. That makes sense to me. I would imagine we would see the Yankees in a – well, I don't know. There's enough high high run games that I was going to say. I would imagine we would see the Yankees in the, the spotlight stacks tonight, but – Rangers, Blue Jays, Cubs, Astros, Angels. There's enough options out there from the the high implied totals that it might not be the Yankees tonight. Yeah, I don't think I don't think you need to worry about ownership just right off the bat too much tonight because, like you said, there there's two teams that people or three teams that people love stacking that have high run totals: Yankees, um, Astros, and the Cubs. Yeah. So I don't see one of them being like overwhelming chalk. I w- I would completely agree. Well, maybe the Astros. Padres are bad. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Let's move on to the next one. Uh, any any concerns for Yankees Orioles from a weather perspective? Not that I'm seeing. So, oh yeah, guys, you should there's there's quite a few games we mentioned it. There's quite a few games that are that have some weather, but this one doesn't look like it's in any jeopardy of being delayed or postponed. Boom. That's all we want to know. <laughs> uh, Pirates Hosting the Reds, 3.7 implied runs for the Pirates, 3.8 for the Reds. It's a 50-50 game. Um, Trevor Williams on the hill for the Pirates. Uh, Luis Castillo on the hill for the Reds. And uh, I'm just going to start it off by saying that I love Luis Castillo tonight. Yeah, me too. So he had a 21.2 swing strike rate in his first start against the Nationals. He was missing a ton of bats. He does give up a bunch of hard contact because he he's a flamethrower. So when yeah. he gets hit, he gets hit hard. And the wind blowing out here is a little bit concerning, but it's also 40 degrees. There's supposed to be 40 degrees in Pittsburgh. Burr. So, yeah, it's, it's good pitching weather. It's not unbearable pitching weather. It's not like it's 20. So, I, I mean, I don't know how he doesn't end up in my lineup for 8,700. Uh, you're not really super scared of any Pirates bats. He's. It's not like he's a 12K pitcher where you have to have a really good outing. He's got to get you 25. So I'm just going to go with the upside play here. He's 8,700, and he's definitely a top three pitcher for me. Yeah. So uh, he's just going to be in my lineup. Like, I'm not scared of these these Pirates guys. Yeah, I will, uh, I'll be having a, a decent amount of him um... – there's somebody else that I like a little bit more. Surprise, surprise. But, uh, I mean, my screen is on the – my sheet is on the screen, so people can see that stuff now. Uh, I think that Castillo will probably be my number two owned pitcher for the night. Nine Ks per nine, three walks per nine, and a 397 FIP uh, from the steamer projections, which looks great to me. Uh, no real worries about the Pirates lineup. Uh, only a 3.7 implied total for runs, third worst on the entire slate. Uh, Castillo has the opportunity to rack up some strikeouts. 7,100 on FanDuel, so he's sm- basically smack dab in the middle of all of the pitchers. I'm willing to take that chance. He has a excellent opportunity to get a bundle of Ks and you know potentially pick up a win. He could be... He's probably the best dollar-for-dollar dollar guy on the board from a pitching standpoint. Yeah, on DraftKings, I have him as, well, him and Gaussman are really good values, I think, tonight on DraftKings. Agreed. And then, like, McCullers would be, like, my top raw points guy. Like, I yep. think he's got a good chance at 25 to 30. Yeah. And then, <clears throat> outside of that, like, I don't see anyone that could really match McCullers' upside outside of Castillo, I think, if he if he's really on his game. I'm with you there. Uh, we're not looking at Trevor Williams at all, I would imagine. Although he's no. not necessarily the worst play on FanDuel, I just so greatly prefer Castillo. Yeah, like if I was playing on FanDuel, I would just pay up for uh, Castillo or get up to, I mean, it, like find twenty three hundred dollars and go to McCullers. So it's those, just those are the two spots that I'll be going. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's just a a slate thing. He's just not anywhere near. Um, my list because of those top two guys totally agree uh for pirates bats um i don't really have any interest in i mean really anybody yeah me either so like i said i'm most likely gonna play castillo so no pirates will be in my lineup 
you can make a case for him because like as one offs, like you can make a case for Polanco who's hitting the ball really hard or Josh Bell. I think you had a Josh Bell home run call last night, didn't you? Didn't Did he, I? Didn't he hit a home run or something? Did or I say I saw, that he was gonna hit a home run? I thought I know you liked him a lot. You, uh, you said uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll take credit for it. <laughs> yeah, maybe he maybe he had a barrel fly out. I saw something on Twitter about Josh Bell. Yeah. So. I don't I don't know what the answer to this is, but we'll just assume that I was right and I made the call. Perfect. Yeah, that, that, it's easier that way. Yeah. Uh, red bats, on the other hand, would be a direction that I'd be willing to go. Um, I think Votto on FanDuel in particular looks incredible. Only four thousand. Um, he's a guy that I would focus on. I don't have a problem having, I like. I don't love having a red stack because of their implied total. Three point eight is just very minuscule. But I think Votto as a one-off bat would be somebody that I would entertain. Um, I'm not really scared of Trevor Williams. Six point five Ks per nine projected from Steamer. A four four point six FIP. This strikes me as the type of game where Votto really takes advantage of his 427 on base, 516 slugging, and just you know does a three for five with two doubles type game. Yeah, and Votto's a guy who he's. I think he's a better play on FanDuel usually because he's a guy who walks a lot. He's he's patient. Yeah. So you don't get penalized as much. Like you get penalized a little bit on DraftKings for walks because a, a walks two and. Um, a hits three, like if you if you hit a single for some reason. Yeah, a little bit less valuable. Yeah. So, and he's he's only four thousand on Fanduel, so you can definitely get him in with these guys that are priced like mid tier pitchers that should be priced way up on Fanduel. So Votto would be a guy I want. Um, and then Shebler, if he's in the lineup, just a guy who's got a lot of power as a one off. I think he looks really nice out. on DK. He's actually a hundred dollars yeah. cheaper on DraftKings than he is on Fanduel. Yeah, thirty one hundred. So, that's that's just a really good price for a guy that could hit a home run here. I would be a little nervous if the lineup that I have in for the Reds ends up being correct. I'd be a little nervous of that lefty, 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 lefty run. Uh, so something to pay attention to there. If they do run out a lineup where they have that sort of stretch, um, somebody outside of Votto is going to get yanked for a pinch hitter almost assuredly. Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, because they're going to bring in a lefty to face that, and they'll swap out. And I would guess it would probably be Shebler or Winkler that come out for a righty, um, because they're obviously not taking Votto out. And you don't see that as much for, uh, you know, you don't see second baseman swaps as much um, as right. you do for, like, an outfielder. So I, I like... I like Shebler on paper. I'd be nervous that he gets the full allotment of plate appearances. Yeah, and he's got a questionable tag near his, or that near his player profile. So <laughs> um, just keep an eye on him. Make sure he's in the lineup. Make sure everyone that you are thinking of playing is going to be in the lineup, but um, especially yeah. if you've got a questionable tag. Yeah, you definitely want to have guys that play. They will have yes. a higher upside. Yes. For sure. <laughs> um, I guess Scooter Jeanette's fine here if he's batting cleanup, 3,500. Yeah. Um, I'd be fine with what? a red stack. Yeah, three, four, five. I'd be right? minimal in it just because of that low implied total. I don't. There's not a lot to love here, just in general. But from a pricing perspective, I think everybody looks fine, and I'd use Votto as a one-off regardless. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. I don't think we have too much else to say here. No, that's about it. Probably gonna have a lot to say here. Uh, Rangers hosting the Blue Jays. Uh, Rangers with a four point nine implied total. Blue Jays 5.1. Uh, that's 48% chance to win for the Rangers. Matt Moore on the hill uh, for Texas. Marco Estrada going for Toronto. And um, I don't have an interest in either pitcher on FanDuel. And just taking a glance at DK, I'm going to assume you don't have any interest in either of them. Yeah, not no interest in either of these pitchers. Um a lot of interest in the bats, though. Yeah, so. yeah. This is going to be there, there's a, a sea of green here right now. Yeah. So, um, do you want to start yeah. on Rangers? Sure. Okay. Yeah. So let me just talk about Estrada a little bit. He's oh, okay. Not yeah, a guy. Ahead. Not a guy I want to use. Um, and he's a fly ball pitcher. Gives up a ton of pulled balls, and <clears throat> he 
So 45% pulled balls to lefties, and he's got 20 mile per hour winds blowing out. Um, Look at that. So Even that amazing details we're getting here. That is nothing I would have ever looked at, and now I hear it, and it's just like, fuck. Pay yeah, attention. So, <laughs> Yeah, like yesterday or last night when I was looking at this, I saw the wind was blowing out like it was projected to be blowing out like 20 miles an hour out to right. Now it looks like it's more towards center field, maybe a little bit even towards left. But um, like Joey Gallo, it's just a perfect matchup for him. Fly ball pitcher, um, a guy who gives up a lot of pulled balls, like all of his home runs come hip to right field. Yeah. So if the wind's blowing out at all, I mean, just Gallo's a really good play. I don't think I need to talk about him too much. You know, yeah, he grades out as, uh, I, I want to say, maybe my best play of the day on FanDuel. Yeah, one of my favorite plays. Let me double check. Night. I don't want to be uh, wrong. Also, uh, Shinsu Chu, he's a guy that can go both ways. Um, <laughs> he's 3,400 on DraftKings. Another guy that I'm looking at. And also, Gallo has dual position eligibility. So he's going to be really popular on DraftKings. Yes, he is. Um, but I, I don't mind. I mean, I don't love playing Chalk Joey Gallo because he's a guy who can strike out four times and give you a zero yes he can but um he could also put three in the seat exactly so he's a he's a guy who could get you two home runs easily also um and then also nomar mazara is a guy who pulls a ton of his home runs so 3400 for him is just a really good price on DraftKings. hits righties really well and it's just really good matchup for these lefties and then i also like elvis andrews and adrian beltre if you want a full stack and just go with the top five that would be a really nice option here yeah every, everybody on the rangers is grading out as something that i would want to have a part of uh chu and gallo for sure just getting you know two lefty bats at the top of the order um looks great chu 2600 like that's for me amazing uh, Gallo grading out as I think the third highest projected total for me on FanDuel, uh, so he's got to be a, end up being a guy that I have an absolute ton of, um, and then I'm more than happy grabbing Elvis Andrews or Beltre, and then all the way to Mazzara. Uh, I'd even go lower than that, you know, because of me that too. four point nine implied total. I, I don't think that you can totally go wrong, but those first five guys are are pretty prime for a big night yeah if you also if you're if you're paying up for like on DraftKings, if you're paying up for castillo and mccullers if you want to do that you can stack like the bottom of this rangers lineup like odor is yeah. a guy who overwhelmingly pulls his home runs over the last few years and he hits righties really hard um projected 478 slugging yeah from steamer he's just so like, that's big he swings really hard if you watch him. Like yeah. he'll he'll fall down on his swings because he's trying to hit home run every time. And then Drew Robinson also is a guy who strikes out a ton but does hit righties pretty well. And he looks like he's gonna bat ninth, but he's twenty five hundred. So I, I I don't have I really don't have a problem grabbing anything from the Rangers. Yeah. It's a great if this wind if this wind is blowing out, like Estrada's gonna give up a couple home runs here almost almost certainly. So Yeah. Uh, I, I feel pretty much the same way about the Blue Jays. They just don't have as many fun, um, like unique bats, in my opinion. But I'd be willing to stack up both sides of this game. 5.1 implied total for the Blue Jays. You can grab almost anybody, all the way down through, like, easily through Steve Pierce, in my opinion. And then, depending on what else you need, like... If you need a catcher, I think Russell Martin is, is perfectly acceptable. I just wish he hit a little higher in the order. Yeah. So Donaldson and Smoke are two of my favorite bats here on the slate, especially now that the wind looks like it's blowing a little bit out to left. Um, so Smoke is awesome yeah. for 4,700. He just a guy who crushes lefties. He, he crushes both sides. But um, I love this matchup for him. Me too. And then... Like, I wouldn't forget about Grichuk and Steve Pierce, like you mentioned. This is a really stackable spot for Toronto. It'll probably be pretty popular, but also this is a game that we got to keep an eye on for the weather. Looks like there can be a chance of thunderstorms all throughout the game time. But I, th I think this one probably gets in. But, I mean, it's easy for me to say <laughs> 10 hours before it starts. But it, it looks okay right now, I think. 
So, okay, I like all pretty much all the bats in this game. So Smoke Donaldson, Grichuk, I like a lot, and then Russell Martin as well on DraftKings. Yeah, big big fan of Donaldson tonight. I think he's my high. Nope, I'm just making shit up. Third or fourth highest uh, projected total for me behind Trout, Stanton, and Gallo. Uh, so love, love, love Donaldson. Love Smoke. They're guys that I'm going to have uh, big time pieces of. Steve Pierce, 2200, uh, hitting fifth for yeah. the Blue Jays. Third highest implied total. Like he's got the opportunity to have a lot of guys on base when he's coming up. Really appealing for me for a guy who has that sort of price point. Lots of upside. Um, especially, like, I would like to use a Blue Jays stack if I have Castillo, where I can grab Donaldson and Smoke and pay that extra salary. But yeah, this is just, this is going to be, I would imagine, the most popular game, barring any weather concerns, because both sides look like they can put up a ton of runs. I would, I would think so. I think, I think Russell Martin is probably my favorite catcher on the slate tonight. And then we didn't mention Solarte, but he's hitting right in the middle of the lineup. And so, like, obviously, if you're stacking up Toronto, you don't have to like leave him out just because we, we didn't spotlight him or whatever. Yeah, Russell Martin looks great at that price, thirty four hundred on DK. Um, he's probably the first catcher that I would want to use mm. at value as well you know you can obviously you can pay up for gary sanchez but it's an extra fifteen hundred dollars if you have the money great um but if you don't don't be afraid to go to russell martin because he's in a, a an exceptional spot today yeah um anybody else that we want to touch on here that i think is slipping through the cracks none for me i think we mentioned like we're pretty much on most of these guys like all 18 guys yeah uh these i would expect to see rangers and blue jays both in the stacks article tonight yeah all righty brewers and cubs brewers with a 4.1 implied total cubs 4.7 um, the brewers are 44 percent to win brandon woodruff on the hill from milwaukee kyle hendricks going for chicago um, I don't love Kendricks as much as I would like to, and uh, Brandon Woodruff, not going to be someone I use on FanDuel, although I don't necessarily hate the value, but he's just way too low for me, and I assume he's not even remotely in play for you on DK. No, he's he's made two relief appearances already this year. Um, One was a, like three or four days ago, I think. So Perfect. He's, like he, I don't think he's going to go very long in this game i don't know really why he's starting um but like they're the not brewers, going with a bullpen game are they well i don't know i mean he he pitched an inning and a third on the second so it was four days ago so i i doubt he goes more than like three or four innings and then you're you're dealing with this brewer's bullpen so we'll have to look at more after the show about how good the brewer's bullpen or who might come in after woodruff yeah but Right now, like it's the top four Cubs that I want. They're they're expensive. They'll probably get some ownership. Um, so like Ian Happ is is one of my favorite plays in this game at forty nine hundred. I completely and, agree. And then thirty two hundred uh, only on FanDuel. Love that price. Is that all he is? Yeah. So that's a, that's a really nice play over there as well. Yeah. Especially when you can play four outfielders. So. Um. Yeah, so Hap, Chris Bryant, Rizzo, and then Contreras, if you want to use him as a catcher. I see he's only 3300 on FanDuel. That's also a really good price, but you don't need to use a catcher, so he probably won't have much ownership. I don't love Contreras on DK at that price. Um, yeah. Rizzo's price is scary. 5000 is a is healthy, uh, but you know he's got the lefty-righty matchup against a guy that's by all accounts, a reliever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, no no problems getting a Cubs stack. It'll be relatively popular. You know, not, very nice implied total. I wouldn't go any lower than Schwarber. I don't, I, I don't have much interest in Russell. As much as I want to love Jason Hayward, it's not a direction that I would go or, or Baez. Um, I would stick to the top five. And for me, it would be mostly, at least on FanDuel, Hap, Bryant, Rizzo. 
Yeah, I, would, I agree. I don't. I don't really need much of anything from Contreras on Fanduel. Yeah. So um, on DraftKings, I don't. You know, at first I thought, okay, the Cubs they got a decent total and they're they're priced up, so people are going to play them. But it's pretty hard to get them in if you want to play McCullers. So, like, if you're if you're fading McCullers, I think a, a full Cubs stack is something that's going to be a little bit different actually tonight because they're like a full run lower than the Astros and then a full run lower than Toronto almost too. So it might not be as as chalky on DraftKings because the, the dynamic pricing has them so high. Yeah. Yeah, like I, that, that Rizzo price scares me. Um, I'm going to have a ton of Cubs on FanDuel. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know what it is. I just got this weird feeling about Schwarber tonight. <laughs> like I just, I mean, uh, he, he crushes righties. Like yeah, I, if he, the problem is if the Brewers bring bring in a lefty, but the Cubs have a pretty balanced lineup, so you can't really. It's not like they have four lefties in a row where you know that they're gonna bring in a lefty at some point. No, they could bring in anything. It's not going to make much of a difference. Yeah. So you want Schwarber against a righty pretty much always. Um, and he's he's going to face Woodruff at least once, maybe maybe twice. Like, he could definitely hit a homer off him. So I don't I don't hate it. I don't think I want to pay 4800 on DraftKings for him. I'm calling it now. Schwarber home run tonight. Schwarber home run. All right. You and when it, it doesn't happen, I'm just going to go back and cut this part of the video up. <laughs> Nobody will ever know. Yeah. Um, any Brewers for you? Yeah, Shaw and Thames would be the two guys. They don't really have good history against Hendricks in terms of like their average exit velocity, but the like Thames should profile well. He hits slower fastballs better than he hits like the the ninety five mile an hour guys. Okay, and Hendricks throws like eighty seven on his fastball. So I don't know if it's just he throws it too slow or Thames is is a little bit fooled, but. Hendricks is not a guy that's going to blow anything by you. And so I like Thames there for just like a, a one-off. And then – and he's only 3,800. Yeah. So him and, him and Shaw would be the two guys. Yeah, I, I like Thames on FanDuel. Only 3,000, which is nice. I think that provides a nice value. Uh, Shaw, on the other hand, is not someone that I would, I'm going to have a part of. He's 4,000 on FanDuel. He's actually $100 more expensive than he is on DK. Uh which I think is a little bit harder to want to go to, especially with that 4.1 implied total. Uh, at three, the DraftKings price looks nice, uh, but on FanDuel, that's a that's a pretty tough road for me. I'd love to like Braun at 3,200, um, but I just don't. I don't see a ton of opportunities from a runs and RBI perspective to really want to go too crazy about the Brewers. Yeah, and then um, you can make a case for the Brewers stack. Uh, you don't love righties against Hendricks, but he's really bad at holding runners. So, uh, like Lorenzo Cain and Domingo Santana at the top, yeah. and then you've got Braun, Shaw, and Thames, the power guys right behind them. So you can make a case for a full stack. It's going to be really low-owned because Hendricks sure. is, a, he is a pretty good pitcher, uh, real life and, and fantasy. Not yeah. for this spot for me, but... Um, so you can make a case like for that stolen base upside, that, and you could rattle Hendricks pretty easily. So I would, I would have a little bit more if, if McCullers wasn't on this slate. I think Hendricks would really look nice on Fanduel, but there's just so much more upside in McCullers for only three hundred more dollars that I, I can't see going a different direction. Yeah, and then that's the same thing for me on on DraftKings. You got to pay seven hundred dollars more for a guy with a lot less upside in Hendricks over a guy like Castillo for only 8,700. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, I think that's it. Remember, potential for a Kyle Schwarber home run today. Schwarber. I right. am clairvoyant. <laughs> now, let's get this. Uh, we've talked about him for, I think, every game, so let's actually talk about him for real now. Astros hosting the Padres. Uh, Houston with a 5.3 implied total. Padres, 3.2. Uh, 71% chance to win for the Astros right now. McCullers on the hill for Houston, as you, I assume, already know. 
uh, Luis Perdomo going for San Diego, who I'm certainly not going to have. Uh, McCullers will be the guy that I have the most in uh, my pitcher slot on FanDuel. Um, you going to pay that freight 12-3 on DK? Yeah, I don't see how I don't. Um, it's just it's just a really good matchup. He's, he's one of the most talented pitchers in the MLB, 18.7% swinging strike rate. In his first start against Texas, but now you got another strikeout heavy team. Um, can strike out righties, can strike out lefties with the best of them, and there's just not a lot of scary bats in this Padres lineup. No, Will Myers, not. Will Myers is on the DL. Um, I mean, that would be more strikeout upside because he does K like 30 percent against righties, but I'd rather not have his bat in there. And like, it's not like like McCullers can strike out every single guy up and down this lineup. Yeah, so. You see a lot of 23% K rates against righties, like 30% for hedges. Um, Renfro, if he's going to be in the lineup, he's another 30% guy. It's just so much K upside. It's like the David Price thing yesterday yeah. where he's just got such a good chance at being the the raw points leader on this slate that you're probably going to need that. So McCullers, 10 Ks per nine, three and a half walks, and a 345 FIP from Steamer. It's yeah. hard to like that much more. I mean, the, the guy's elite, and he's got a very, very reasonable price on FanDuel. Only eighty five hundred. Um, it would shock me if he's not by far the highest owned pitcher on the day on FanDuel. Yeah, he's just he's such a good play. I mean, we we've mentioned him every single like if he's not on the slate, it's a completely different slate. But yeah, it really um, is. He's just I, I don't know how you don't lock him in. Astros. So. Projected to win by 2.1 runs. That's. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, that's just so. Like, the odds of McCullers getting a win are dramatic. It's mm -hmm. it's hard to get away from him. Um, yeah. I don't know how you don't play him on FanDuel. So. Yeah. I expect to have him in more than half of my lineups. Yeah. Uh, I think we could just completely disregard any Padres bats. Yep, no Padres for me. Cool. Astros are kind of tough in that they are priced exactly where they should be. You're not getting any any, uh, any value on the dollar here. They're just all really good hitters. But you got to pay that freight. Um, uh, it's obviously reasonable to stack them. Uh, 5.3 implied run total is the highest on the board. I think... When I have lineups that have Luis Castillo, that'll be the those will be the spots where I try to fit in more Astros. Um, but I don't have a problem grabbing anybody. Do you have any thoughts? Yeah. Um, so Perdomo is a ground ball pitcher. He gets in trouble with walks. Um, he, he, if you're putting guys on base against Houston, you're going to be in trouble pretty quick because, yep. like, up and down the order, just everyone has. Everyone's just a, a good hitter, and um, they complement each other really well. You've got all those righties stacked at the top. Um, Perdomo is a lot better against right-handers in his career, especially last year, um, in terms of Ks and the contact he gives up. This so, is a different crop of right-handed hitters. Yeah, exactly. Like I'm not saying stay away from the righties at all, but if they're going to be really chalky, like the top of that lineup, you could certainly go to some of these guys near the bottom who crush righties. Like they've got Reddick for only 4,000 on DraftKings. You've got Marwan Gonzalez, dual position eligibility at 3,900. And then Brian McCann, him and Russell Martin are going to rival the catcher spot for my lineup probably. Yeah. Um, even Derek Fisher for 3,100, supposed to bat ninth. Like I think all these lefties are in play at the bottom too. So like love the top stack. Um, you could certainly see – a different pitcher outside of Perdomo getting into this game in the third inning. And then um, this Houston stack could just go nuts. Like they're just so deep. So I had a buddy that uh, always claimed that anytime he watched Derek Fisher play basketball, he, the guy never missed. It's the only thing I picture when I see that name. <laughs> I can't picture a baseball player. He's just, he's just a, he's just a tiny point guard in my head. 
Um, he's good. I mean, he he let off for a while last year when there were some injuries for Houston. He yeah. he just smashed for like two weeks straight. Yeah, I'll, I'm gonna see. It'll be hard for me to have a ton of the Astros because I think there's enough value out there to go different directions. But if this game gets out of hand, you know, Springer, Bregman, Altuve, Correa, right at the top. To have those guys with Castillo, who I would imagine I would have in that scenario, like I'm fine with it. But there, there's just so much high end talent in the ask the top half of the Astros lineup mm-hmm. that it's terrifying. It's it's just yeah. it, it's it's really scary to think about what they can do tonight. Um, like Altuve, forty six hundred tonight, but I, I mean, why not? Uh, I'm not. Yeah. Uh, Perdomo with a 6.8K per nine in Steamer. Like, if he's not going to be able to get Ks, man, the Astros could chain it together and this game could get out of hand real quick. Yeah. Um, so, like, I, I like, like, the wraparound stack at 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, if you want to do something like that. Yeah. Like, when it's going to be when it's gonna be chalky, and I actually I don't know how chalky it's going to be because – um, I don't know if people are going to prior- prioritize McCullers first or if they're going to prior- prioritize the bats first and then just plug in Castillo and maybe like Hendricks or something like that and stack up the the top of the Astros. So, I don't know. I just I just want to be a little bit different if I end up stacking the Astros. So, I do like the wraparound stack. I think it gets overused. But with a lineup like this, like I love McCann and Fisher. So, if you want to go 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, I, I don't think that's a – the worst idea in the world. Now I'm with you there. It is definitely going to be tough for people on DK to have McCullers and a lot of the top half of the Astros. There's just not enough salary to go around. But if somebody's going, like you said, Castillo and Hendricks, um, that'll open things up a little bit more. Yeah, maybe if you use Gaussman on DraftKings, I, I bet you could probably do it. If you use Gaussman and McCullers, I don't know. It's it's a it's definitely a unique direction to go. Yeah, it wouldn't shock me at all if it became a top lineup. Yeah, I don't think we have anything else to touch on. Let's get away from those Padres before they make me sick. Yeah, <laughs> Angels and A's. Oh, uh, any weather concerns for the last couple games that we talked about? Um, no. Houston has the retractable roof, so if it's open, there is some wind blowing out. It looks like. But it's it's like 75, 80 degrees there. So Yeah. Okay. Nothing nothing concerning there. And the same thing for Milwaukee. They've got a they've got a closed roof. It's like 30 degrees there, so it'll be closed. Yeah, it better be. Uh Angels and A's. Angels with a four point eight implied total. A's four point two. That's a fifty for fifty five percent chance of a win for the Angels. We've got Parker Bridwell going for um for the angels and daniel gossett going for the a's uh these are not two guys that i would like to be rostering tonight i assume you're going to be on the same page yep no no gossett or bridwell for me so it's the hitters here again yes it is and uh if we're starting with the angels um that 4.8 implied total looks pretty nice to me as does the two three four portion of the order at least on FanDuel. Uh, Trout, Upton, and Pujols going to be a, a direction I go. I don't really love Cole Calhoun all that much, uh, but I don't mind having him in part of a stack just for that lefty-righty matchup. But I think uh, my bread's going to get buttered with the the heart of the Angels order. Yep, uh, Trout um, and Upton are the, the main guys I want. This Gossett, he's he's not a really good pitcher. No, he is not. Um, he can't miss bats, and if you're not going to miss bats against Upton and Trout, they're going to make you pay if you make a mistake. So yeah. he gives up um, 36% hard contact rate and 383 Woba, 147 whip against righties and under 20% Ks. And Sign then me up. He's not, yeah, he's not good against lefties either. So it's just – it's a really good matchup. I don't know how owned the A's will be. Trout will get some ownership by himself, but like – Upton is forty three hundred on DraftKings, and he'll probably be half the ownership of Trout. So yeah, yeah, I like them both. I, I like I like Upton a lot um, for that value. Thirty five hundred on FanDuel. You know, Gossett not terrifying. 
you have to assume that Upton will get a few options with Trout on base for him. And, you know, I mean, Trout can unless, score from unless the first. Trout homers. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, unless <laughs> Trout puts one in the seats. Uh, but, you know, Trout's somebody that could score from first on a on a well-hit ball. So oh, yeah. uh, Upton has a lot of opportunity for RBI tonight. Yeah, I love it. I don't really care for Cozart all that much. 4,300 on DK is a, is a lot. Uh, I don't mind it too much for 3,400 on uh, FanDuel if you want to go, you know, for the full freight of the top part of the Angels order. But he's not someone that I would probably try to grab on DK. Yeah. Um, so, oh, another guy that I should mention for the Angels, if he wasn't batting eighth, Otani. Otani yeah, he's... <laughs> He's been good. Like, he's been legitimately good. Like, he had a rough spring or whatever. He has two but, homers, right? Yeah, he, he homered off Kluber. Yeah. Um, homered in his first home game, and his average exit velocity is 96.3 um, in his first 11 batted ball events. So that's 13th in the MLB right now. Obviously a small sample, but... Yeah, he's, uh, at least it shows he's squaring stuff up. Yeah, he's, he's squaring it up. Like, I don't know how he's not batting, like, in the top five or six yet. I'm sure he will at some point. They can maybe get pools out of there, but I was gonna say flop, sw- uh, switch him with Cole Calhoun. Yeah, even that, like put him fifth. Yeah, he's got power. Like, I think he's the real deal. So, actually, yeah, I, I mean, really, put him fourth, drop Pujols to fifth to separate those righty bats a little bit more. Yeah, but yeah, I, I mean, it's hard not to like the Angels at that implied total, especially with the the lack of pitching here. Um, I like the A's as well. I was, they grade out better on paper than they do when I actually look at the implied total. 4.2 runs is not that appealing, but it's not as if, um, Parker Bridwell is going to be jamming a bunch of fear into the hearts of A's hitters today. Uh, I don't mind going with anything from the top half of the A's order. Matt Joyce, I think, is an interesting option. 2,600 on FanDuel, 3,100 on DK. And, uh, you know, Matt Olson obviously smashes the ball. Uh, I think that he is another person that could be pretty interesting coming from the A's. You like an A's stack tonight by any chance? Yeah, I, I, it seems like I stack the A's every day and they just don't, they just come don't quite get there. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Bridwell's a guy you want to target with lefties he's got a 14 percent k rate uh 546 x fip and over 37 percent hard contact against lefties so i'm looking at joyce like you said uh if he's batting second and then jed lowry is a guy that i play a lot yeah. he's only 3300 on DraftKings at second base so that's some really nice value and then um chris davis is jammed in between lowry and matt olsen so if you want to stack up two through four I have no problem with that. Maybe this is the day that the A's stack goes off after everyone's off of them. Um, yeah, I don't I'd be okay gonna... grabbing those A's when I have McCullers. Yeah, you can definitely fit them on DraftKings. I'm sure you can on FanDuel too. Yeah. Yeah, no no problems there whatsoever. Um, Bridwell, just not a guy that I'm going to be nervous about. Yeah, I think Matt Olson dongs here. So he's my he's my dong call. Okay. Um I think he. I think he gets one today. This is a really, really good matchup for him. I hope we're both right. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of um, being right, I mentioned it on my basketball show, but for those of you that watched the live stream last night, I won my Chick Fil A bet against Chris Bag, so he owes me a Chick Fil A meal probably Monday. So I'll, I'll eat that during the live stream. I'll make sure I stay <laughs> muted as I gobble down a spicy chicken sandwich and some nuggets. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if you heard the bet. Uh, we we bet on no, the I... amount of minutes that Gerald Green would play last night. <laughs> what was the over under? Twenty eight. I originally set him in my spreadsheet for twenty six, and then he talked me into moving it up a little bit. So I set it at twenty eight, and he ended up playing twenty six minutes. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so I got I. Had, like tweets about it this morning like hey hope you enjoy that chick-fil-a i was like oh nice i forgot about it didn't even look <laughs> good to know <laughs> so i lost money last night but at the very least i'm gonna get a, a, a value meal from chick-fil-a yeah, you get a, on, you get a free Chris. meal out of it yeah 
Yeah, uh, I'm going to end up having a little bit of an A stack. I'll have a little bit more of an Angel stack. Can't really get away from it when both pitchers are not very good. Mm -hmm. No weather issues here, I assume. Uh, nothing that I'm seeing. Okay. Looks like it's LA, so. Yeah. Should be. Uh, final game of the night. And this one does have some weather issues. So, Giants, Dodgers. Apparently, I don't have whoever's hitting seventh for the Dodgers. So, let me figure out what I messed up there. Is it Forsyth? That's what I have. Is it Forsyth? I, I put eighth twice. So, that's usually... It's usually just fat fingering something. <laughs> um, all right. So, Giants, 3.5 run implied total. Uh, Dodgers, 4.2. That's a 42% chance to win for the Giants. San Francisco throwing Derek Holland, and uh, the Dodgers have Kenta Maeda going tonight. I don't really love Maeda on FanDuel. Um, I'd much rather pay $300 less to get McCullers. Maeda is the most expensive pitcher on the board for FanDuel. Um, I'm not looking at Derek Holland at all, uh, and I assume that you would prefer... McCullers as well to Maeda today. Yep. Yeah. So Maeda is a guy who's got to be. Um, he's he, when he's priced up like this, he has to be really efficient with K's because he like if you look at his game logs, even from like last year, it's very rare he goes over like five or six innings. So he's got Dave Roberts as his manager, um, who notoriously pulls guys early at like eighty-three pitches. Um, in the sixth inning when they're rolling. And so he's got to get the, the strikeouts really quick. I think he had 10 in his first start, nine or 10. So he can do it, yeah. but um, I just like, I'll find the extra $1,100 to pay up for McCullers and plus the weather too. Like, I don't know if I want to play pitchers in this game in general. So yeah, I'm with you there. Um, he's not a guy that I'm going to have a ton of, with the incredible value on McCullers in comparison, and then just how much I like Luis Castillo, uh, I'm just going to struggle to get there. Although the 3.5 implied total for the Giants is pretty appealing. You know, you have to assume that Maeda is going to be a big part of that, but I'm just really not worried about the Giants all that much. I don't really want any part of any Giants bats. Um, nothing really grading out for me is something that I would want to try to target in a one-off scenario. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you there. No Giants bats for me. There are a lot of other good spots, so no Giants bats, especially at home here. Agreed. Um, if this game even happens, uh, yeah. while it is 12 hours from now, there's a, a lot of weather on the horizon, potentially. So be prepared. Keep an eye on that up until lock. Um, you don't want to leave yourself hanging. But let's talk Dodgers bats because I think we're going to be wanting part of this. Uh, I love Puig tonight. I'm I'm with you there. Uh, so I I kind of hope this game plays, but I'm also a little bit conflicted because I love stacking against Derek Holland and with so many good stacks that I'm looking at. Like I just hope he he gets saved for tomorrow or whatever, and <laughs> we can stack him up in some good weather. Yeah, but um. Like, he's one of the worst pitchers in the MLB, in my opinion. Not a um, fan of him at all. Yeah, and he just gets destroyed by righties. Puig had some reverse splits last year, but I, I don't know that that's necessarily real. So I, I like Puig a lot here. He's crushing the ball. Um, Kike Hernandez, he's going to be in the top three or four of the order, it looks like. And then I would even be considering the lefties, so Bellinger. Seeger, and then obviously Chris Taylor. He's a righty at the top. Um, so I'll be looking at a top five LA stack here. Only problem is the weather. So yeah, weather weather is a very, very real problem for tonight, but I would be more than okay grabbing the top four Dodgers. And uh, they're not even expensive. No, you know, not the biggest implied total, which is a little surprising to me. I would have expected slightly more than what it's at, but man, the pricing for those guys for Taylor Seager, Puig, and Hernandez, I, I like it a lot. I have no fear of uh, Derek Holland whatsoever, and I don't mind going lefty lefty in that stack for Seager because he's Seager. 
Yep. Um, you know, Kemp is a guy that I would be willing to take a flyer on as well. 2700 on FanDuel. That would be fine with me. Not the biggest Matt Kemp fan in the world any longer, but I don't know. Yeah, it's not, I mean, it's not like he's going to get fooled by Derek Holland's stuff. He strikes out under 17% of the time Yeah, against lefties and hits them decently hard. Um, yeah, I would... I mean, I like him in probably smaller parks, sure. but uh, yeah. So the, the weather in the park thing is going to make this stack really low owned. So if it's if it's you know six seven thirty Eastern, uh, or I guess six thirty Eastern, um, and this game's looking like it's going to play, you're going to get the Dodgers stack pretty low owned against a really bad pitcher. Yeah, for sure. All righty, so. I took my projections this morning and dumped them into Fantasy Cruncher. For anybody that watches my basketball videos, I normally load in my projections and take a look at what gets crunched out and sort of the, ex the exposures across my 150 lines. So I have it up for FanDuel right now. We could take a look at how that came out, and then we'll load them up for uh, DK to see how my numbers look. But if we look at – I'll try to hit the, the high notes um, – in the 150 lines that I had, it's 52% McCullers, which makes perfect sense to me, and then 30% Castillo. The rest of it is a, a combo of Hendricks, Maeda, and then one lineup a piece of Woodruff and Sabathia, which could end up as other things. When they get when you hit one like that with the amount of randomness that I include, um, you know the, those sort of things can change. But the, the McCullers, Castillo, Hendricks first three that's gonna that's gonna be pretty steady and I'm, I'm happy with that sort of split that that's what i would be looking for um lots of joey gallo yeah uh lots of ian hap lots of trout uh, it's probably more billy hamilton that i would like so i would probably want to take a deeper look there but getting donaldson chris bryant lots of stanton um it's easy to get to some of these bigger bats tonight there's enough value out there in my opinion um, yep. I'm going to load it into DK because I'm really interested to see that because I don't really play there. So I have no idea what it's going to look like when this gets spit out. <laughs> Probably going to get a lot of McCullers and Castillo. Uh, that would be my guess. So let's grab everybody from DK and we'll load it up. I always find this so fun. You just never know what's going to come out. And it's like, okay, everything I just said before uh, makes me look stupid. <laughs> it leads me to things because... I've talked about it before, and I know Alex has as well. Like, ultimately, this is just one big math problem. And sometimes you can't visibly see the way the pieces fit together as right. well as, you know, an algorithm can. So mm -hmm. it's always good to, like, basically <clears throat> check behind your work, so to speak. Well, yeah, and you can predict ownership that way, too. You can see how, how people are going to go based on um, your projections. All right, so I'm going to do 150 lines with my projections. I do a good bit of randomness because it's baseball and uh, a cap exposure. So we'll see what comes out here. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a bundle Castillo. of Castillo. Yeah. And McCullers. <laughs> yeah, so pretty similar. Yeah, so that's, that's a lot of Sabathia. Ooh, that scares me. Only five pitchers. No Gaussman. No Gaussman at all. Is That's really interesting. Like, that's what I'm talking about. That's one of those things where I would not have expected that. If I look back here, I think that he's just... It's too low. His, his, his raw projection is just too low. But that much Sabathia is shocking to me. Yeah. Because that doesn't even... It, he doesn't even grade out well just from a visual standpoint. I don't like Sabathia at that price. Neither do I. Neither do I. That would be something I would look... I would dig deeper into Sabathia and probably make some downward tweaks to his projection mm -hmm. because I don't think that that jives with sort of the logic. Yeah, I, I don't get that one. But um, Catcher... Um, I was going to say this earlier. I, I don't know why that I didn't, but Chirino grades out really nicely if you need a catcher in that Texas stack. Uh, yeah, twenty nine hundred. He comes out ultimately as the the highest owned catcher. If I were playing one hundred and fifty, just raw lines. But 
you know, lots of Russell Martin, lots of Contreras. That stuff makes sense to me. Yeah, and if you're like if you're stacking up a team four or five minutes stacking them, and you you get to a you get to a position that's weak, just use the the guy in your stack, even yeah. if he's not in a favorable spot in the order. One hundred percent. That's what that's what I do if I'm four or five man stacking, and catcher sucks that day or whatever. Then just put in the guy. Maybe it's not a, a righty lefty matchup, or he, he doesn't have the platoon. Then, I mean, you're still assuming the rest of your guys are going to be getting on base and scoring runs. So that's what I do usually. It's just absolutely throw in the catcher. Lots of Joey Gallo, Smoke, and Matt Olson at first base. That all makes a hundred percent sense. Yeah. Second base, Travis and Solarte. I don't think we touched on them. Uh, maybe enough. Yeah, um, it's hard to just because Donaldson Smoker right there, but yeah. they're, so they're both they're both second base eligible on DraftKings, and yeah, so Solarte has that shortstop eligibility, and yeah, they're both super cheap. So that Blue Jays stack, like, there's just a lot to like from the Blue Jays tonight. Mm -hmm. You know, Donaldson is the number one third baseman, decent amount of Beltre and Machado. And then Bryant, all of that just, you know, naturally follows the direction we were going. Yeah. Uh, shortstop, Solarte, Seeger, Semyon, Andrews. Like, I'm, they're all going in the similar direction to what we were talking about for yep. sure. That's a very small amount of Correa, and I'm surprised by that. It might just be a price thing. It's it's probably a price thing. Just And really, he's 5000 Yeah, he's probably the highest price shortstop. I'm sure he is. Let me check. Yeah, he's, he's the highest price shortstop. And then outfield, that's probably way too much Billy Hamilton, but Gallo, Trout, Joyce, Ian Happ, Steve Pierce, Puig. Mm -hmm. You know, we're hitting on all of the guys that were uh, very interesting to us tonight. Yeah. And he, where's Schwarber hiding? Man, those... Only 2%. Three, three lineups with Schwarber. Those are going to be the ones that people love because he's going to he's gonna dong tonight. <laughs> I don't think that I'll have the uh, the Trevor Williams CC Sabathia uh, pitching combo tonight, though. <laughs> yeah, See, you can't just trust it full stop immediately. You do want to make some tweaks. It's always good to have a, an alternate line like that, but mm -hmm. this is definitely spitting out and like way too much CC Sabathia and Trevor <laughs> Williams. <laughs> All righty, uh, do you have anything else that you want to touch on? Um. We will have the spotlight pitchers, stacks, and hitters out today. I'll be doing the pitchers as usual. Um, so those will come out after Osimo's rankings come out. Um, so keep an eye on those. He might have some different players ranked higher or lower than than us. So it's always good to double check with him. Absolutely. And He's the brains behind this joint. Yeah, yeah. So he... You know, just defer to the rankings. They come out later than this podcast, so stuff might change. Um, and then I'll have the uh, and two NHL articles out that I do every day. There are four games tonight for NHL. So if you're if you're a hockey fan, if you're an NHL DFS fan, then check those out. They should be out around four Eastern. There you go. Um, I didn't mention this in the NBA video, and we touched on it a little bit at the end of the live stream last night, but I want to make sure I get it in here. If you check my Twitter feed or the Twitter feed for uh, Osimo.com, you'll see that we're we're going to have a contest on FanDuel this weekend for the the weekend of the Masters. So just Saturday and Sunday post-cut. Mm -hmm. um, Osimo will be in the tournament along with the rest of us, so... Uh, my partner in crime on the live stream, Chris Spaggs, Jake. Yep. Uh, we're all going to be in this tournament as well. Um, anybody that beats uh, Osimo in the tournament will have an opportunity to uh, be chosen at random to win a uh, free PGA entry for next week. But there's a, a it's a three dollar entry to get into the tournament we have the link and it's been tweeted out by both accounts but come check that out if you want to play against us i'm coming to take this thing down and take all your money so um be ready for me but check it out um if you go to fanduel.com slash awesome uh, you can get a direct link into uh, this golf tournament for saturday and he uh awesome is going to be putting out um 
not just rankings, but projections as well uh, for this specific event. So um, highly recommend checking those out. You're going to get the, the raw data if you need some help um, trying to put together a, a weekend lineup for the Masters. That's yeah. all I've got. I'm no. coming for everybody. I'm coming for that number one spot. I'm coming for the boss. <laughs> We're going to be going right back over to joshengelman.com after this. Everybody's going to be like, he's the guy we want. <laughs> or he wins the tournament and tells everybody, look, get in line. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, Which that's is way more, more likely because I don't mess around with golf. And he's yeah. significantly better at golf and every other sport, in my opinion. Yep, yep. yep. <laughs> All righty, guys, that's it. Um, I am going to be out of pocket for the next couple days. Um, I will be back Monday morning uh, to get back on track here. But big weekend of WrestleMania, so I've got some friends in town. Um, so you're going to miss my smiling face for a few days. But Check out all of Jake's stuff. Check out the hockey uh, information. He is a savant when it comes to hockey highly recommend checking that stuff out that's all Appreciate i got uh have a good weekend everybody best of luck uh you got anything else you want to add jake no good luck guys um should be a fun seven game slate and don't worry about ownership too much just play your play your favorite plays and make sure you check out the mlb articles later today yeah uh hitters and stacks will be out in the early afternoon not too much to worry about in those morning games so best of luck guys we'll talk to you soon